Vengeance Demon Hunters are the strongest tank in Mythic Plus right now. They're virtually unkillable, they deal the most damage of any tank by far, and they provide some of the strongest crowd control in the game. They don't provide much direct defensive utility to their groups like Protection Paladins or Bear Druids, but they are very good at preventing people from taking damage by applying layer after layer of crowd control on enemies. Because most of Demon Hunter's CC is AoE, it's every bit as effective against 20 targets as it is against 2. Hi there, it's Lairold, and today I'm going to talk about how to play Vengeance Demon Hunter in Dragonflight Patch 10.2.5. Since we're around the middle of the season, this will be specifically oriented toward Mythic Plus. But before I do, be sure to like and subscribe. We just hit 15,000 subscribers, we're pretty happy about it, and we're really excited about pushing toward the 20k mark. And with that being said, let's get right into it. Let's start by talking about how popular Vengeance Demon Hunter actually is. In plus 20 dungeons, Vengeance Demon Hunters make up 49% of all tanks. In plus 25s and up, they represent over 75% of the entire tank population. Does that mean the other tanks are bad or unplayable? Of course not, don't be ridiculous, but it does mean that Demon Hunter is better. That's not a controversial statement. I like Paladin, I like Druid, I like them all. And I think I might like Paladin and Druid specifically more for pugs because you can heal party members when they make mistakes or the healer gets overwhelmed, I think they can do more for a group. But Demon Hunter is the better tank. It deals more damage, it has better crowd control, it is tankier. Is it easier to play? Honestly, maybe. Despite all the amazing power that Demon Hunter brings, you know, silences, AoE grips, AoE stuns, damage, unkillableness, more damage, it's also really easy to play well, and that makes it super appealing. You really can't go wrong playing a Demon Hunter right now. That's kind of usually the case in Mythic Plus, at least in terms of them being fun. But there have been very few moments in WoW's history when a spec was this overpowered and stayed that way for a while. But that seems like it's exactly what's happening. Normally I would transition into talking about a tank's strengths and weaknesses, but like, if you want to hear the strengths of Vengeance Demon Hunter, Rewatch the last two sections again. It's obvious. They are strength. They are strength given form. As for weaknesses, I don't even want to pretend like they have any. I think that making that argument in the current state of class tuning is kind of disingenuous. Sure, you have to debuff enemies to mitigate their damage, so you are technically weak against environmental damage as a demon hunter. Okay, cool, just don't stand in the fire. Problem solved. Vengeance Demon Hunter is pretty decent at handling Mythic Plus affixes. There are several it's really good at, and several it can't really do anything about at all. First off, Entangling is very easy to break. You can use Infernal Strike or Fellblade or just walk out of the thing. Sigil of Chains is really great for dealing with enemies in Sanguine Pools, or for pulling a group of spiteful ads together and keeping them locked down. You can also use Sigil of Silence to take care of caster mobs that are hanging out in Sanguine Pools, so multiple tools for dealing with a whole variety of problems. You can use Imprison to shut down incorporeal ads. Bolstering and Raging aren't really a huge deal because you're so tanky you can probably just face tank it and be fine, but if they are killing you and you need to kite, you can do that pretty easily thanks to Infernal Strike. Storming and Volcanic are both relatively easy to deal with. That's pretty true on most tanks, but for Demon Hunter, if for some reason you don't just dodge them and you get hit, you can press spacebar, or you can use Infernal Strike to get back on the ground and back into a regular tanking position. Now in terms of dealing with Afflicted, you're worthless. You can't help, you can just tell the other people to do the job and say good job when they do. Much like Monks, Bursting is your one true weakness in terms of affixes. You can't do much to help, although you can drop darkness, which is more than monks provide. But like monks, your super high damage output makes it pretty hard to dial back on low health bursting mobs that are about to roll a high stack count onto the group. And because your defenses are reliant on constantly dealing damage, trying to slow damage can actually be a scary thing to do. But again, worst case scenario, you can just kite for a few seconds. Bursting is the worst affix, I, I swear. 
Now that I've spent a few months playing with Demon Hunter's current tier set bonuses, I have to admit, they're pretty good. They really add a ton of juice onto the current sigil-based playstyle, primarily through cooldown reduction, and that really is my favorite mechanic in WoW, so it's always good to see more of it. Let's take a look at the bonuses. The two-piece bonus makes it so that when you attack a target affected by Sigil of Flame, your damage and healing are increased by 2% and your stamina is increased by 2%. This lasts for 8 seconds and it stacks up to 5 times. The four-piece bonus makes it so that Sigil of Flame's periodic damage has a chance to flare up, shattering an additional soul fragment from the target and dealing a decent amount of extra damage. More importantly, for every 40 Fury you spend, Sigil of Flame's cooldown is reduced by one second. Basically, the two-piece bonus grants you 10% more damage and healing pretty much all the time, and 10% more stamina all the time. That is insanely strong for a two-piece. Eight seconds is enough in conjunction with all the other class bonuses that you have that you can pretty much maintain this at all times, but I wouldn't mind if that duration were a little longer. It will sometimes fall off between pulls or if you have to kite for any reason or, I don't know, like a boss walks away or something, but getting up to five stacks is super fast. You can basically go from zero to full stacks in only two or three seconds. My testing from before patch 10.2 had put the four piece bonus around three to five percent more damage just from the procs. Now that we've gotten to play with it for a while and can kind of look at some logs and stuff, it's actually a bit better than I expected. It's closer to just granting 5% or maybe more like 6% more damage overall. The procs also generate soul fragments, which is pretty great. They account for anywhere from like 20 to 25% of your total soul fragments over the course of a run. It's pretty insane how good this tier set bonus is. The cooldown reduction really is the secret sauce though. It's the grease that keeps this entire engine running smoothly. This is an excellent tier set bonus. It grants a ton of damage, bonus health, cooldown reduction, and extra resources. It's also really simple. You don't really need to understand any complex mechanics or even how it works in order to use it effectively. And it scales very well into AoE. I will admit I voted for the season two tier set bonus to come back in season four, and in hindsight, I'm glad it lost. I, I was wrong. I've come around, I like this one more, even if the season two bonus could technically be stronger in some situations, like raid. This one's just always good and it's, it's so simple. It's great. I really only have one main talent set up that I wanna consider here. There is a little bit of tweaking you can make, but not a huge amount of stuff to change, really. Okay, here I have my talent window pulled up. This is the main Vengeance Demon Hunter talent build for Mythic Plus, and I'm just gonna kind of walk through some of the decisions that you make in this tree, and frankly, why there isn't a lot of flexibility. And let's just start right in the left-hand tree here. It's really great that we can pick up Fellblade without having to sacrifice Aura of Pain, the fact that we're able to get both of those and kind of make use of all the value of Fellblade, all of the fury that it provides is really, really good. There are a couple of options here. Some people will drop Champion of the Glaive, which is a talent that I like, but some people will drop that in order to pick up Improved Sigil of Misery, get a little bit more crowd control pressure. The base cooldown of Sigil, Mis Sigil of Misery is two minutes, so bringing that down to 90 seconds, not a huge deal. I kind of would rather just have a little bit more pulling power from Champion of the Glaive, a little bit more quality of life, but I think that's a pretty small decision either way. Additionally, some people will drop Infernal, nope, Internal Struggle and pick up Pitch Black to get a little bit more availability on Darkness. Again, dropping it from five minutes down to three minutes, not a huge difference maker, but definitely valuable in some situations. And giving up 3% mastery, there's something there. I mean, you know, it's a little bit of consistent value, but not exactly a huge sacrifice either. The thing here is that both of these are options where you can take basically just a small drop in personal quality of life and get a little bit of a group utility value. It's okay. I like Demon Muzzle, it's a really strong defensive uh, passive here, in fact I'll just fly over to a uh, training dummy just to show off that this can trigger off of all of your sigils including Elysian Decree, like I'll target this training dummy here and hit it with Elysian Decree and now it's dealing 8% less magic damage to me, pretty sick. 
in lower level keys and stuff that's really not very challenging, you know, that 8% damage reduction, it's not adding any damage, it's not adding any quality of life or anything, so you can drop that and take Pursuit. I particularly like this in like Black Rook Hold, any sort of area where moving is actually like part of the challenge of the dungeon and you really have to walk a long time and you can't mount. Having Pursuit is pretty nice. And, you know, I don't really want to give up internal struggle to get that. I guess you could, but I would kind of rather just give up Demon Muzzle if I'm not being challenged defensively. As for taking the hunt and Elysian Decree, that's basically a no-brainer. You're doing that. Over in the right-hand side of the tree, Ascending Flame has basically become a must-have talent. It was a little touch-and-go early on in the season, but I think it's become pretty clear that this is just an excellent, excellent talent. It adds a lot of damage over the course of a dungeon, and... You know, why would you not have it? Similarly, Sigil of Chains was something that was like pretty good quality of life to have, but wasn't quite locked into the meta build early on in the season, but that's become completely established. Additionally, Last Resort and Feed the Demon and Calcified Spikes have all really fallen off, primarily because you just don't need the damage reduction from Calcified Spikes, which is amazing. There's tons of damage reduction to be had here, but how you can't mitigate stuff to to death, how much damage reduction do you need? So early on there was a talent setup that would run Painbringer just like we do now, it would drop vulnerability in Soul Crush, and it would take like Feed the Demon Last Resort and I guess Soul Carver, and it would be a little bit safer if you're playing poorly, but quite frankly, Taking Last Resort and getting yourself a cheat death effect is not as good for staying alive as taking Soul Crush and just having substantially more availability on Frailty. Being able to stack Frailty multiple times and get multiple stacks of the Leech and the damage reduction and the damage output that you get out of all these various talents is just so, so, so much stronger. So, you know, ultimately, I think you're better off just going with the Soul Crush setup with Soul Crush and Vulnerability and Void Reaver and Frailty all stacking together to turn it into this incredibly powerful debuff and also kind of a mini game, you know, focusing on keeping it up and boosting your damage, like just sacrificing all the damage to get last resort. It's just not worth it. It's not worth it at all. Over here on the right-hand side of the tree, all of these talents on the bottom right-hand side of the tree are really good now. Oh, you know, it was so bad early on in the expansion in the .0 patch. Like, what a change it has been. Charred Flesh is incredible. Burning Alive is really, really great. Really powerful. Cycle of Binding, kind of like the tier set bonus. They combine with each other to really have a positive uh, interaction and just give you so much availability on all of your sigils, not just the damaging ones like Elysian Decree and Sigil of Flame, but Sigil of Silence, Sigil of Chain, Sigil of Misery, all just have these incredibly short cooldowns for how strong they are due to Cycle of Binding and due to the availability of all of your sigils because of your tier set bonus reducing Sigil of Flame so much. Fiery Demise makes Fiery Brand into this huge offensive cooldown. Chains of Anger makes it so that all your sigils are larger and last longer. You're able to get just so much uptime on Sigil of Silence. It's really crazy how strong Sigil of Silence is. Like, if Sigil of Silence didn't exist, I think Demon Hunter Stranglehold on Mythic Plus would be substantially less. I think they probably would lose out to Paladins just you know, by not having the ability to AoE silence, but they do. They're the one spec in the game still that can like consistently, reliably AoE silence over and over again. And who could compete with that in the current state of Mythic Plus, where every caster mob or every pack is just loaded with caster mobs? It's 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 such an absolute checkmate to everything that Mythic Plus mobs bring to the table. Being able to pick up Dark Blair Boon and get that cooldown reduction and that refund on the Fury is really good for keeping the whole rotation functioning and turning Fell Devastation from being like a very expensive but powerful cooldown into just a very powerful cooldown that's available quite a lot more often. And Illuminates, Illuminated Sigils is really the secret sauce that makes all of the rest of the talents work, that makes this whole Sigil play style that has turned Demon Hunter from a pretty good tank into a completely overpowered tank. The 15% increase to parry attacks from enemies when you're affected or who are affected by Sigil of Flame is like so much damage reduction. It combines so well with 
demon spikes and specifically deflecting spikes. You have two different 15% parry chance increases. You also get a lot of parry from the crit that you're wearing. And then just having having the ability to use a sigil and still have one banked up be, to be able to silence or chains and still have one banked up is just such good quality of life and really, really has a good effect on your throughput as well. Being able to use an Elysian Decree and have one cooling down ready to burst out and potentially throw out two Elysian Decrees in pretty short succession to really burst down a pack of mobs hugely valuable. Being able to always have a Sigil of Flame rolling on a target and also one cooling down so that you can maintain that 100% uptime, but then potentially have one up at the start of the next pull so that you're having a lot easier time holding threat all the time. Just all of that is enabled by Illuminated Sigils. It's one of the strongest talents I've ever seen. And that's pretty much it for Demon Hunter talents. You're really locked into taking Soul Crush, Illuminated Sigils, Dark Glare Boon, Sigil of Chains is maybe like one of the handful of optional talents, but it's just such good quality of life. I can't really imagine sacrificing it for anything. There's not anything that I would want to take in its place, like maybe Volatile Flame Blood. I think I would rather have the utility of Sigil of Chains. Don't really feel like I need the damage reduction of Calcified Spikes. Don't really feel like I need the occasional damage of Soul Furnace. I suppose you could drop one point in Painbringer to get that instead if you're really not that worried about damage reduction. But Painbringer gives you an absolutely massive amount of damage reduction, so I don't really think I would want to give that up. I feel pretty locked into this talent setup, and I'm not upset about it at all. It gives you everything you need. Damage, defensives, utility, what more could you ask for? It's the strongest spec in the game. Why, why mess with a good thing? Now let's move on to abilities and the basic rotation. Demon Hunter is kind of the culmination of all of Blizzard's builder spender class design over the years and even from other games like Diablo. You generate fury and souls with Sigil of Flame, Fracture, Immolation Aura, and Fellblade. And then you spend them with either Spirit Bomb or Soul Cleave. Other than Fellblade, the skills that generate fury also generate souls. Because of this, consuming fury and souls is also linked. Hitting enemies with Spirit Bomb and Soul Cleave applies Frailty, which is your primary debuff. And really that is the thing that makes this class so insanely powerful. If we could nail it down to one single thing, which uh, you can't, it is probably the biggest reason. It grants damage, it grants damage reduction, and it grants leech, and it stacks. Let's start by talking about how you use Spirit Bomb and Soul Cleave in AoE, because that is the most complicated part of the rotation, and that is also the more common thing you deal with in Mythic Plus. You want to use Spirit Bomb when you have four or five Soul Fragments available. You want to use Soul Cleave to spend extra Fury when you have zero Soul Fragments available. That is the key on how you use those two spenders. The cap on active fragments is 5, so if you're at 4 or 5, you don't want to generate more soul fragments without consuming them with Spirit Bomb. That would waste damage. You also don't want a Spirit Bomb with fewer than 4 fragments, as that would waste Fury. If you have leftover Fury immediately after casting a Spirit Bomb and no souls available, that's important, that is when you use Soul Cleave to dump out the Fury. In general, it goes like this. Build some souls and Fury cast Spirit Bomb to eat up some souls and also some fury, then dump some fury with Soul Cleave to generate more frailty stacks and then start generating more souls and fury. It's a back and forth cycle of generating two resources at once, consuming one, finishing off consuming the other, then generating both again at the same time, consuming all of one, then the other, repeat, repeat, repeat. The key to playing Demon Hunter well is making sure that you're never wasting any of your resources or cooldowns. This means you want to maintain Sigil of Flames 100% of the time, use Immolation Aura anytime it's available, and use Fellblade and Fracture anytime that they're up, and wouldn't cap you on Fury or Souls. Okay, but now let's talk about single target. In single target, like Pure, one boss, no adds, the rotation, gets a lot simpler. You don't bother with Spirit Bomb, you just Soul Cleave. Technically speaking, you can still use Spirit Bomb when you have five souls, that's an option, but you can also just Soul Cleave the whole time to spend all of the fury you generate and not really worry about the souls at all, they just heal you in this case. The difference between the two playstyles is pretty tiny in terms of damage output, and because Soul Crush makes Soul Cleave apply an extra stack of frailty, you'll actually be substantially tankier if you just dump 100% of your fury with Soul Cleave and single target. 
Don't worry about the souls at all. You just build fury, then you spin it with soul cleave, repeat without capping your fury or letting any of your fury generators sit on cooldown for long and you're basically good. It's just about the easiest thing in the world. Now let's talk about the main defensive skills you have as a demon hunter. There's demon spikes, which is a very simple active mitigation skill. You press it, your armor goes up, that's it. It's a really important defensive layer, and you should make good use of it whenever you're tanking. It's just not complicated. The worst thing you can do is to not hit demon spikes enough. You will take a lot less damage whenever you have demon spikes active. But weirdly, that's kind of it for purely defensive skills that aren't major cooldowns. Basically, everything Demon Hunter does is a mix of offense and defense. I think that's why the class does so much damage. We've already covered the offensive side of things, so that that's it. There's Demon Spikes, press it, be sure to use it on pulls. That's it. Your offensive cooldowns as a Demon Hunter are very strong, and they add a lot of damage when used correctly. One of the big skills that separates good Vengeance Demon Hunter players from great ones is timing their cooldowns correctly, and most of that comes down to making sure you've gotten a bunch of frailty stacks onto your enemies before hitting them with your offensive cooldowns. It's pretty simple. Frailty gives you 4% more damage per stack. So if you can get six stacks active on a target and then hit them with the hunt, it's gonna do 24% more damage. The hunt can deal hundreds of thousands of damage in a single cast, so getting those frailty stacks up and doing you know, 24% more is really important for maximizing your damage output. The first and most important cooldown is Fiery Brand. It functions as the Demon Hunter shield wall, granting 40% damage reduction against debuffed enemies. Its duration can be extended by Immolation Aura thanks to Charred Flesh, and it spreads to a nearby enemy every second due to burning alive. It cannot spread back to an enemy it has already been on previously, but it will spread at its base duration of 10 seconds, so applying Fiery Brand to one enemy will cause it to ripple throughout a pack. It also deals a ton of damage, and it has a little bit of a damage over time effect as well, and more importantly, it applies a huge damage buff. Thanks to Fiery Demise, you deal 50% more fire damage to enemies affected by Fiery Brand. So whenever possible, you want to have Fiery Brand active on as many enemies as you can. It's also a powerful defensive cooldown, but that's honestly less important than the damage bonus. Your second most important offensive cooldown is Fell Devastation. It's a combination of an offensive and defensive cooldown, kind of like everything else that Vengeance Demon Hunter does. It heals you for a bunch of damage and grants you 6 seconds of metamorphosis, your biggest defensive cooldown, so you kinda wanna treat it like a defensive layer of its own. You generally wanna use Fell Devastation as much as you can in Mythic Plus, but if you're near the end of a pull, then you probably wanna try to hold it for the next pull to establish some early threat. Since it triggers metamorphosis, you can use it proactively to live through big boss hits. Elysian Decree is a sigil, despite not having the word sigil in its name, and it interacts with all of your other sigil talents. It deals a huge burst of damage and spawns three soul fragments. It's pretty simple, and pretty good. The Hunt is another simple but very strong offensive cooldown. I mean really, simplicity and strength, those are kind of the two key words for the whole class, right? After a short cast, you dash to your enemy, dealing a ton of single target damage to them and applying a decent sized damage over time effect to every enemy you've passed through along the way. You also get a huge leech bonus against that primary target for the next 20 seconds. As for defensive cooldowns, you have Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is your main big defensive cooldown. It is a massive boost to your health and to armor, and it's only on a two minute cooldown, so it's useful for basically any defensive purpose. It's good as a proactive skill to use before a big boss hit. It's good to use as a regular old mitigation tool when you're about to take a bunch of damage at the start of a big pull. And it's pretty good to use as a reactive defensive cooldown if your health suddenly drops low from a bunch of unexpected damage in the middle of a pull. Metamorphosis also makes your fracture cast generate an extra soul and 20 more fury, so even your most defensive cooldown has a major offensive bonus added on to it. Demon Hunters, what a class. Now I wanna go over how to pull on a Vengeance Demon Hunter. I know that pulling packs of mobs in dungeons can be challenging for newer players, so it's always something I like to emphasize. 
Holding Threat in AoE on a Demon Hunter is very easy if you have your skills available, but actually really difficult if you don't. I always like to open up by casting Sigil of Flame from range if a pack is fairly tightly stacked. That's really the, the key here. If you're able to Sigil of Flame a pack before anybody's hit them, you're going to be fine on Threat. But if you can't, that is when things are a little bit more challenging. So if a pack isn't stacked, then I'll hold on to Sigil of Flame until I have jumped in and gathered them all up. In either case, I like to open up by Infernal Striking into the pack, not directly into the middle, you don't want enemies to surround you and hit you in the back, you want to move more toward the close edge so that you hit them all but they're all in front of you and you haven't moved out of range of the healer. While you're in the air, you want to hit Demon Spikes and Immolation Aura as you reach the pack of enemies. If it's a decent sized pack and you have enough fury, you should have 4 or 5 souls built and you can use Spirit Bomb straight away. If not, I would Fracture once, then Spirit Bomb, and that's usually all you need to do to establish threat. So having Sigil of Flame at the start of pulls is really, really helpful. Picking up that initial threat without it is pretty tough. If I'm nearing the end of a pull, I will usually hold a Sigil of Flame cast for the start of the next pull just to make things more consistent. In terms of stats, you really just want to maximize your item level. As for secondary stat balance, Demon Hunters want to enchant and jump for haste and crit. Haste is the best overall stat in my opinion, it feels the best in terms of your rotation and shortening your global cooldown. Crit is a little less reliable defensively, but it's great for damage, it does give you a lot of parry chance and you do have a massive amount of built-in parry chance, and that makes it a pretty good defensive stat overall. Also as a Vengeance Demon Hunter, damage is healing, so crit's pretty great. Leech is the best option for a Bracer and Cloak enchant, since you deal a lot of damage, leech healing will add up pretty quickly. For weapon enchants, you want a Sophic Devotion and a Wafting Devotion, one on each hand, and it doesn't matter which one is which. Okay, I think it's time to wrap things up. Demon Hunter is absolutely dominant right now, and, and so much fun, right? Like, just to give a personal anecdote, late last night while doing a key a handful of hours before the weekly reset, my group's healer disconnected and everyone died while fighting Yasma. This isn't normally a big deal, I've soloed plenty of Yasmas, but it was incorporeal and tyrannical week, and I had 25% of the boss's health left to go. Also, to be frank, my Demon Hunter's gear sucks. It was amazing in Season 2, very close to full best in slot, but it's on a different realm from the rest of my characters right now, so I can't fix any of my Season 2 crafted gear, which I am still wearing at 447 item level. So I'm under 470 item level equipped soloing a plus 20 asthma and two incorporeal mob spawn. And it still didn't matter. I just lived through being double debuffed, unable to heal or do damage, and killed the boss. It's an absurd class. You don't need gear. You don't need a healer. You don't even need eyes. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.